The session for today is introduction to adaptive cards, leveraging the new actions in Microsoft Teams, and of course, through Power Automate. So firstly, before we begin the session, SharePoint conference next year has been rebranded as the M365 conference, and this is going to be held in Las Vegas, Nevada next year from March 23rd to 25th, 2021. This year, we could not hold it due to COVID. Also, thank you goes out to all the sponsors for the virtual conference, so please a big shout out to all our sponsors. A little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Reza Dorani. I'm based out of Houston, Texas, currently in quarantine in San Diego. I'm a principal consultant for Catapult Systems. I am a BizApps MVP. I am a Power Platform community super user. I was born in India and now a citizen of the United States. I'm also an avid YouTuber. I blog a lot about or vlog about Power Platform on my YouTube channel. So if, never, if you've never checked out my YouTube channel, highly recommend you to do so. So let's begin with our topic today. The topic is an introduction to adaptive cards by leveraging Power Automate and of course Microsoft Teams. And uh, in this session, once again, just like my session yesterday, it's going to be a demo heavy session. So we're going to cover as much as we can in the stipulated amount of time. Let's get started with session on adaptive cards. The agenda for the session today is pretty simple. We will look at what are adaptive cards. What is the sim we will look at the structure of an adaptive card. How can we leverage Power Automate with the new team's actions for adaptive cards? Demos and then some learning resources for you to which will help you get started with adaptive cards. So first things first, what are adaptive cards? Adaptive cards are platform agnostic snippets of UI authored in JSON that apps and services can openly exchange portable. That is the textbook definition of adaptive cards. The key aspects that I want you guys to focus on is number one, platform agnostic, JSON based, and portable. At the same time, when this JSON is delivered to the specific application, this adaptive card natively adapts and that's why the word is adaptive it adapts to its surroundings so if you look at the screenshots on the right if i was to plug the adaptive card json if i was to post it to outlook it will actually adapt itself to the output frame same goes for teams or web chat web chat or cortana or windows timeline or many other services that support adaptive cards these cards are fully extensible. They are open sourced, extremely low cost, very easy to design and very easy to consume them. And the best part is they are automatically styled depending upon the UX and brand guidelines of the host application. They are declarative. That means no coding is allowed and honestly no coding is needed and we will be looking at this in the session. Now we spoke about adaptive cards being these JSON based cards. So obviously if it is based on JSON, there has to be a structure associated with this card. And this is how a typical adaptive card JSON structure looks like. These cards have a type attribute and the type has to be adaptive card. Of course, that defines the type of the JSON. And these adaptive cards have multiple versions depending upon the progress adaptive cards has made over the course of the last year. Within the JSON root for adaptive card, we have the body tag and in the body tag, you can start defining your building blocks and these building blocks are known as elements. Now in the, in the example that I've showcased on the right hand side, if you look at the body tag, we have two elements that I have defined within the body, which is an array. I have a text block, which is where I can plug in sample text, just like a label. And then I have a type of image wherein I can plug in the URL of an image to showcase an image. So this is where you will plug in your elements in the body tag and you can define as many elements as you want. Same goes for the actions tab. And as the name itself suggests, actions is typically where the action bar, which is at the bottom of the adaptive card, gets rendered and you can take specific actions like 
submitting the data on the card or maybe opening a particular URL as defined right here in the JSON. Now that, sorry, now that we have looked at the structure of the JSON, the key question that everyone should be asking, including me, when I started looking into adaptive cards is why should I learn JSON now and a new schema definition language, literally, is there any help available for me to go out and build these adaptive cards? And the answer is yes. And that answer is adaptivecards.io. If you have never checked out adaptivecards.io, I will highly recommend you to do so. Now, let's go ahead and actually fire up adaptivecards.io in the web browser. This basically leads you to the adaptive cards website that has been set up. This will walk you through how you can get started with adaptive cards, the different services that support adaptive cards, how you can extend adaptive cards as a pro dev and all the other news and announcements around adaptive cards, everything in a one stop shop that is adaptivecards.io. At the same time, right here on the website is a link to docs.microsoft.com that takes you to all the documentation around adaptive cards that you need to be sure to check it out. At the same time, we also have a schema explorer that's available as well as part of the documentation. And out here, every property that is available as part of the adaptive cards definition is available right here. So you don't have to be an expert in order for you to go ahead and plug and play. Now I'm looking at the chat window. Someone asked the question, can the image be a part of my SharePoint document library also? Currently, no, it has to be an anonymously accessible image. Also, at continuing with the discussion on the adaptive card schema. So here's the schema for a typical adaptive card. So if you would like to know what elements you can add as part of the adaptive card, we have the card elements tag right, right here. If you would like to know what actions you would like to take right here. They are categorized very neatly out here in the schema explorer. So I will highly recommend you to check this out. At the same time, we have something known as the adaptive cards designer. And this is exactly where you would be required to go to to plug or get the JSON structure. So you don't have to be a JSON expert to start building your JSON. In the designer, once you log in, the first thing I want you all to focus on, which is very, very important, is the version which is on the top right hand corner right here. We have the version defined for my adaptive card. It's very important to know which service supports which version of the adaptive cards. Today we are purely talking about Microsoft Teams along with Power Automate, which is Flows. For that reason, the target version that is supported currently by Microsoft Teams is version 1.0. And that's the reason why I'm switching my target version to 1.0. However, in the adaptive card designer, you can switch over to various versions. And as these versions progress, you get new features, new aspects that you can add to your cards. Now in this scenario, I have a very simple card that's laid out. If you head over to new card, there are a wide variety of templates that are available for free that you can utilize. For example, if I like the weather template, just click on this, it will plug the weather template and here is the JSON available for me to leverage right here. You can customize these existing templates. So let's say I want to add an additional text block. I just drag, drop, place it here, and that's a new text block that has come into my template. And as I make these changes, this one at the bottom also changes. You can get this directly from you. Also start from a blank slate. So you don't have to start from a template. If you look at the select host app option right here, currently showing me bot framework. So this is how the app would look if I was plug, if I was to plug in this adaptive card in the bot framework. If I want to look at this in an Outlook email format, this is what it will look like. If I was to look at it in Teams light mode or Teams dark mode, notice how the adaptive card is transforming itself. So you can look at how the card would look in your host application right here with a very, very important. And for copying the JSON, just click on the car copy card JSON and you can take the card with you. Now that we've looked at this, let's say I want to build a brand new card. All you have to do is go to new card and let's say pick a blank card. 
Now in my scenario, I'm going to use the Teams Lite experience. And right here, I get this empty card schema. Remember, Teams only supports schema 1.0. So the first thing is go and change your schema to 1.0. That's exactly what I've done. I have an empty card. And if you focus on the JSON that's available right here at the bottom, this is my card payload editor that has been generated for me. Now, if I would like to add elements on this card, just select your element, drag and drop them and place them. Once you have the element dropped, notice on the right hand side you have the card structure. Plus, when you select an element, the contextual properties associated with the element come alive. Now in my scenario, I have just added a very, very simple text block right here. So if I go to the text block, I have an option which says text and maybe I want to call this adaptive cards, right? So it changes the text to adaptive cards. There are other settings like style, like I can change the font size, I can change the weight, I can even change the color. There are many things that I can modify or customize depending upon the properties that the element exposes. Typically for the color property, I tend to stick to default because if you keep it default, as and when your host application changes, it will automatically be handled for you. As against, if I pick a color, for example, if I pick the warning color, which is orange, it might not look great on a white background, whereas it may look nice on a dark background. So you need to be sure as to for which service are you designing this adaptive card for but if you're not sure the ideal way is just stick to default and you can change the font size weight and other attributes so i just added a very simple message called adaptive cards now let's say i want to include an image once again just pick the image drop it right here and the image has a property known as image url if i would like to plug in the url i will just go in and look at the property on the right and just plug in the url and that's my image that shows up right here. Very simple adaptive card, right? I have adaptive cards, I have an image, and let's say I want to create an action. I want the user to also take an action. I can add something known as an action set. Once I add the action set, I can add an action. And there are four types of actions you can take. You can open any specific URL, you can submit the card, and you can toggle the visibility or show the card. In my scenario, just to keep it really simple, I'm going to add the open URL action. And notice as and when there are any validation errors in my card, immediately at the bottom, it clearly highlights that the action that I just added or the button element that I just added has a property that is missing. And the property that is missing is the URL property. So let's say in my case, I want this to open adaptivecards.io. So all I need to do is plug in the URL right here and maybe change this to adaptive cards and my card is ready to use. And here is the JSON associated with my card. Of course, please notice the, the version again changed, so I need to be very careful that I'm on version 1.0. And once you have all that set, you are good to go with the JSON. So please go ahead and explore the designer. You can be really creative out here. You can do a lot of cool stuff with adaptive cards specifically in the designer itself before you take the JSON to your service. Remember, this session is not about learning adaptive cards. It is about how can we use these cards in Teams using Flow, and that's where I'm heading to next. Now that we've explored the different features that are available as part of the adaptive card designer, now let's understand what is available as part of Teams and adaptive cards along with Power Automate. Now, Power Automate contains adaptive card actions which enable you to post adaptive cards as forms. And not just that, you can even post cards and wait for a response from the user so that you can dynamically get the response and continue your actions and flow. If you look at the screenshot on the right, now as part of the team's actions, you have these new actions that are related to adaptive cards Please note they are in preview currently, it's supposed to go into general availability soon, but there are these four actions that you can leverage. At the same time, this truly opens up a wide variety of scenarios for you now because you can actually post relevant information to teams, either to your team members or directly to the channels, and not just that, but even request for responses from your team members. Now, teams 
is one service. Flow is a service. Adaptive parts, I.O. designer is another service. Now, wouldn't it be great if all of these would be intertwined together and I can directly start building adaptive cards within Flow itself and have that same designer experience baked into my Flow? And guess what? That feature is actually available today, but as an experimental feature. So let's go and look at, first of all, what are these actions and how can I get these actions in my flow? And then, of course, we will look at demos as well. So the first thing is I will head over to flow. And in my scenario, the first piece of my demo is just to explore these actions. We are not going to execute the actions. We're just going to look at what the actions are. So in this case, I'm just creating a very simple button flow that gets triggered whenever a button is clicked. And this will start launching my flow. And right here, if I search for Teams, and if I pick Microsoft Teams, this will list out all the actions that are available as part of Teams. Now right here, if you search for the word adaptive, Notice there are four actions that are available as part of the adaptive cards experience for teams within flow. And the four actions are post your own adaptive card as the flow bot to a user. Post your own adaptive card as the flow bot to a channel. So you can post a card to a user or you can post the bot to a channel. At the same time, you can also post an adaptive card to a channel or to a user and even wait for a response. So the card will be executed in Teams and Flow will wait until the user gives a response. So you can actually have an interactive experience as well with your users by going through all these four experiences. Now let's look at certain scenarios where we can leverage this. I will first show you a couple of scenarios that of course I have pre-built as part of this demo. And then one use case, we will go and build the entire experience from scratch. This is a live demo, so I'm hoping the demo gods are with me when I will try and execute the live demo. But for the two demos that I've pre-created, let's just walk through those scenarios. Scenario number one is I have a flow that I have created that sends out that sends out a birthday card, that is an adaptive card, to the member of my team when they have a birthday. So in my case, I have a team called Cat Team, and as part of this team, I have, if I go to manage team, I have a very small team here with me and three other users. Now, of course, I've already gone ahead and made sure some of the users have their birthdays today. And let's say they set their birthdays up in Active Directory, of course. And now, as part of my team's experience, I want to send out a birthday wish to the user or to my team member who has their birthday on the specific date. So I've built a flow that runs on a schedule. So it's a recurrence flow or a scheduled flow. And within flow, you have the option of querying the group members by just providing the ID of your team. So in my case, my team is called the cat team. And once it queries the members of the team, I am looping through every member of the team and then going ahead and fetching their user profile. Next, I get the information of the birthday associated with that user's profile. And then I check to see if this birthday, if the user's birthday is today. If it is, I go ahead and fetch the user's profile photo. And then I'm leveraging that action that I showcased earlier, post your own adaptive card as the flow bot to a channel. And I'm posting this to my team in the general channel. And this is the adaptive card that I'm posting. Now, of course, did I build this adaptive card from scratch? No. All I did was went to the designer, picked an empty card and built my card. And as you can see, as part of this card, these are all the stuff. This is the structure of my card. I have this image, which is a GIF that is actually showing out the blowing candles right here. I've given a message. Have a good day. Happy birthday. I have a space here for storing the user's image, and I also have a space here for giving out the user's name. Once I built out my simple structure in JSON using adaptive card designer, I literally just copied this. I went back to Power Automate, just posted that here, and then started dynamically plugging in the properties that I want to provide from my flow. For example, the user's name, whose birthday is today, the user's profile image, which I am fetching from the uh, from the uh, from the user's profile. 
Now, someone asked me a question. Can this URL be? Uh, can I have this URL coming from SharePoint? Yes, you can. But in that case, it has to be in. You have to actually have the entire base 64 attribute of that image. So in my case, as you can see, the user's profile image is not an anonymous image, but I convert that into base 64 using this function in or using this expression in flow called base 64 and I'm transforming this. And once I complete this part and let's say my flow was to run right now, I have a user who actually has a birthday as part of this team. So this flow is going to run. It's going to fetch all the team members and it's going to check to see if anyone's birthday is today. And if it is the case, then notice if I go to my general channel, the user James has the birthday today. So it's gone ahead and specified that, hey James, happy birthday, have a good good day. And here's the adaptive card that is actually coming from Teams and is leveraging the Flowbot to post it to my Teams channel. And I was testing this yesterday as well, so I probably have more birthdays in here as you can see. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two is whenever a new team member joins my team. So let's say I go ahead and I add a new team member. Maybe I want to welcome that team member or maybe I want to go ahead and provide some resources to that team member so that they get more uh, so that they understand what this team is about. And maybe it's a it's a new hire and I have a team for new hires. And as they join my company, they need to go through and look at all the new hire learning resources. Now, rather than doing that in an email, maybe we have a team and as soon as the user joins the team, I can have a flow triggered in that scenario as well. And in that scenario, I already have a flow once again pre-created and this flow gets triggered whenever a new team member is added. This is again a trigger that is currently available in preview that you can leverage. So whenever a new member comes to my team, once again, I get the user's profile information, get the user's picture, and then go ahead and post an adaptive card to my team. Once again, if I run this and if I test this, this will go ahead and post a welcome message to a new team member who just joined my team. So here's my new team member. Here's the user's profile image from AD. Here's the user's designation and also the user's bio, which it is fetching from Active Directory as well. So you can do a lot of these interactive based operations with adaptive cards where you can actually post messages in nice looking UI fashion using the adaptive cards. Now both of these scenarios that I covered right now is just posting a message to teams and I can do the same thing to a user as well. You can either post it directly to a user, so you can target a specific user or you can target a channel in teams. Now let's go ahead and cover a more complex scenario wherein I have a process and within that process I need I need an adaptive card to go out to a team's channel and I want the users to respond or to perform some action in my card and then maybe my process needs to move ahead. Now to cover a scenario like this, let's go ahead and look at my use case. So I have a very simple use case. My use case is I have a list in SharePoint called tickets wherein users come in and create new requests to IT based on issues what they are facing. So if I go and create a new ticket, all I have to do is give my title, give the description, pick my category and maybe add an attachment and that's about it. The moment this request goes in, maybe my requirement is I have a team and in that team I have a channel. Whoever is part of that channel, I want them to validate every request that comes in, whether that request is valid or not. If it is valid, they can mark it as valid and then the process can move ahead. If not, the ticket is invalidated right then and there. Now, of course, I can go ahead and use approvals in flow and there are many other things that I could leverage. But what if I can leverage an adaptive card to do the same thing because my users are in teams and I can go directly to them and not just that post a nice looking adaptive card and gather the response from my users. In order for me to do or in order for me to execute something like this, what I would need to do is take the following steps. So let's go ahead and execute this one by one. I will head over to flow and I will go and create a brand new flow and my flow will get triggered whenever an item is created in my SharePoint list. As simple as that. The next step is or before we even create the flow, the most important thing is in order for you to use some of these features. Remember I mentioned you need to have the experimental feature turned on. For that, you need to ensure you go to settings 
power automate settings and you turn this feature on. If this feature is turned off, some of the settings will not be available for you. This is on a per user basis. So if you turn on the setting, it doesn't mean your entire tenant has the setting. This is just for your account. So in my case, I already have this feature turned on. So you go to settings, power automate search settings, turn this on and save. That's all you got to do. Now coming back to my use case, I want an adaptive card to be posted to my team whenever a new item is created in my tickets list. So I've used the trigger, which is when an item is created in a SharePoint list, I will pick my SharePoint site and I will go ahead and I will pick my tickets list. Once I've done this much, now I will go ahead and once again go to Microsoft Teams as my connector and search for adaptive. Now in this case, I want to post an adaptive card to a Teams channel and wait for a response. So I want anyone in that Teams channel to respond and that's the action that I have picked. Now very, very important to note, the moment you pick this action, notice how it is asking me for certain properties. Let's learn what these properties are. Property number one is which team are you targeting this adaptive card for? So I'm targeting this for my cat team. Which channel are you targeting this adaptive card for? I am targeting this to my general channel. Of course, if there were multiple channels, they would all list out here. Now, before I click on this create adaptive card, okay, one very important thing to note is when you are designing your adaptive card, you can also send values into the adaptive card and wait for the user to respond. So you can do both. Any values that you want to send to the adaptive card, you can put them right here as key value pairs. So what do I mean by values? When I am posting this adaptive card to my team, maybe I want to provide some information like what is the title of the ticket? What is the category of the ticket and what is the URL of the ticket? So what I can do right here is I can go and generate those key value pairs. So I can call this ticket title, right? And right here, I can use dynamic content and this is the new experimental feature. So this may be a little clunky and as you can see, it's not plugging in the dynamic content for me. That's because it's experimental and there may be some issues here. So the trick around this for now until this fix comes in is use an action known as compose and compose. All compose does is it literally generates an object on the fly in flow for you. So in this case, when I go to compose, I have the same dynamic content action and notice out here for some reason it just lists out. So I will go ahead and pick out the title of my ticket because I want to pass that to my adaptive card. I want to pick the category of my ticket. So I will go and pick the category value and I will also go ahead and pick the link to my ticket. And all of these are properties that are coming from my trigger. Right. So if you have a flow, if you have various scenarios or actions that you've defined, all those properties are available to you so you can send them over to whatever adaptive card you design. Now in my scenario right here, I want to pass the ticket title. So that's my key. What's my value? My value is going to be the title. So I'm going to paste this here. I'm going to remove these. I'm just going to keep the title. Next thing I need is the ticket category. And once again, I'm going to plug in just the ticket category right here. So I have the ticket title and I have my ticket category. And next thing that I want to pass is my ticket URL. These are all the input parameters that I will leverage in my adaptive card that I will be designing shortly. And once again, this one will be the link to the item. OK, so I've just defined three properties. You can define as many properties as you want. Once I have these properties defined, I have this option right here which says create the adaptive card and this basically opens that same adaptive cards designer experience within flow itself. So I don't even have to go to this adaptive card designer and start designing. I don't even have to do that. And once again, this comes with that same experience. You can build a blank card, user card, change cards, properties. Everything's right here. And the beauty is you don't have to worry about versioning. Versioning is already handled for you. Now. The next step is maybe let's say I want to leverage this card and I will say, OK, let's change the text. New ticket create. New ticket has been created. Maybe I don't need this text box. And right here, instead of your name, which is the text in this text block, I want to replace this with the value that I'm passing into this adaptive card. So notice right here, there's an option called bind. It's right here, bind. If you select your element and click on bind, those properties that I passed from flow 
right before I came here, ticket title, category, URL, or whatever additional properties you define, you can pick them right here. So I'm going to pick the ticket title. So this will post the ticket title here dynamically. Right here, I have another text field. I'm going to put in the ticket category. So I've got the ticket title and I've got the ticket category. And of course, if you want to add more text to this, notice on the right hand side, it has this symbol associated with it under curly braces. Maybe I want to call this ticket category colon. So it will actually put my text and then define the category. And I can do the same thing for ticket title as well. I can do ticket title colon so and so. So it will place the ticket title. It will place the ticket category right here. Now, not just this. I want the user to go ahead and take a decision. So this now will be posted as an adaptive card to teams and I want the users of my channel to respond to this to tell me whether this request was valid or not. So what I need right now, I will go ahead and delete all these elements because I don't want them. And what I will do is first I will add something known as a choice set which provides me choices. Now what are the choices right here on the right hand side? I have a couple of choices. I will provide the choice as yes and these are key value pairs as well and I will provide you no. So they can either respond with whether this is valid, yes or no. And my placeholder text is, is request valid. So they can respond to me and tell me whether the request is valid or not. And at the same time, I also want them to enter comments. So I'll end, put another placeholder for text and I will say enter comments here. So they can provide your comments and they can also say whether the request was valid or not. Now notice the moment I did this when I added the input attributes, it gave me a couple of validation errors. And the reason for these validation errors is whenever you add, whenever you add an input type element onto your adaptive card, you have to define a unique ID associated with it. Best practice because it's an adaptive card always. This is again, this is just naming standards. Notice in my case, I don't have an ID set. I will set an ID. I will call this AC request, right? request valid. Why? Because this is the response I'm going to get. So this is just a unique ID that I'm providing to this control and I will do the same thing right here. AC comments. So I have two elements that I have defined AC required valid AC comments. Notice my errors are gone. I already have a submit action right here and what this does is this will submit the card. Now maybe I want to also provide a link right here. So what the user can do in that case in that case is go ahead and maybe open the item in SharePoint. So what I can do right here is add an action and click the open URL action. Once again, you see the title says open URL. Maybe I'll say open item. That is the ticket. So I can say open ticket and now I need to give it the ticket URL. Now remember earlier I spoke about bind. So you notice bind gave me this tag. I can actually copy this, go to open ticket and in the URL just paste that and I also had a property that I was passing called ticket URL, so I can just change this to ticket URL. Now that property that I'm passing from my flow to my adaptive card will come right here and this will open my ticket URL. OK. Another thing that I would like to add right here is not just that you can also go in and plug in an icon URL as well. So I could have an icon URL right here that points to SharePoint, so it will actually show the SharePoint icon right here as well. But for this demo, I'm just going to keep it very simple. Now that I've built my card, I will go ahead and click on save card. Very important. You have to save this card. This will now save it right here. If you want to make modifications, go back, make your changes. If you add more attributes, you can add more attributes. Go back, make the changes. Now that I have defined my card, the next step is once the user submits the card, what happens? In that case, you need to first give the user a message and the message is going to be card submitted or I can say ticket response received. Now please note out here you can also go ahead now and add dynamic content. So I can say ticket so and so I have received the response. So you can be as uh, as open as you want to be right here. So I'll say ticket response received for and I will plug in the title of my ticket right here. The option says should you update the card and the answer is yes. I want the card to be updated. That means I want that once the user submits the response, I want the card to close, display the message that this ticket has been responded to. Once you reach this point, right? Once you've reached this point, the next step that I want to take is I want to check to see what responses have the user given as part of the adaptive card, right? Has the user said that the request is valid or not? And I want to 
go ahead and perform certain operations depending upon the response that the user provides. Now, once again, I will go ahead and add another compose action in here. And right here, I want to show you how you can get the data from this adaptive card. If you look at the dynamic properties, it will not list out any dynamic properties from the adaptive card today. The product team is working on this and in future you will have those options open up. As of now, those options unfortunately are not available right here. So how do I get the values out of my card? The first step is you see the name of my action is too long, so I will just go and rename this and call this card. I'm just going to make it very simple. So I've called this card and right here. If I go to function, I can plug in something known as expressions and my expression is going to be body card. You would have to learn this for today. Question mark. OK, body card. That means whatever is the body in the output of my card. There is a node in the output known as data and then you can fetch any property that you defined within your card. Now remember I defined and I named my properties AC request valid AC comments. So I can just plug in those exact names right here. So if I check AC request valid, I will get that property value right here and I will keep it here. So I prove it to you and I will also go back to function and I will call this AC comments. So I'm adding both my expressions right here. Also, once I receive the response, I want to go ahead and check a condition and my condition is I would like to check to see if the request valid. Once again, go to expression, plug my expression right here. Is the request valid equal to yes? If it is yes, I would like to go ahead and update my SharePoint list item. So I will go ahead and update my SharePoint list item. So once again, pick my list. Right here, pick my list. Pick the ID of my list right here. Let's go to functions. Pick the ID. Title was a mandatory field, so I'll have to repopulate it. So is description. It's provided with the description. Now, request valid value. I know that if it is yes, it comes here, so I can hard code this to yes. And the command, once again, I have the command as an expression right here, so I can just copy this expression, come right here, go to expression, and plug it in. And I need the same scenario here, so I will go ahead and use the copy to clipboard action and flow. Go right here, paste it. And let's go ahead and change this to no. And once I'm done with this, I will give my flow a nice name. I'm going to call this adaptive cards teams and I will go ahead and save my flow. So all I've done right now is define the flow that whenever an item is created in the SharePoint list, it will go ahead and post out this adaptive card dynamically pass attributes that I have defined right here. I can leverage those attributes in the adaptive card by using that bind attribute. Get the response and because in the response currently dynamic content is not supported, I had to add a little bit of JSON logic, a little bit of JSON logic to get the values out and the JSON logic was right here. Once I'm done with this, my flow is ready to go. Now if I head back to my SharePoint list and let's say I create a new request in my ticketing system. So let's go ahead and reload my SharePoint. All right, I will go and click on new and in this case, let's say I have an issue with my phone. I have a phone issue, phone not working and my category is facilities I will save. So all I've done right now is I've come to my ticketing list and I have mentioned that I have an issue with my phone. I have an issue with my phone. Here's the description of my issue and it is related to categories. Now if I head back to the flow and of course the flow will take up to two minutes to run initially because it's the first time that I just created the flow. Once my flow triggers whenever the item is created in that SharePoint list, we will see that the flow will go ahead and fetch all that information and then post the adaptive card to my team and my teams right here. And as you can see, it just happened. My flow got triggered. So let's refresh this. Here is my flow in action. You see the flow is running. If I select this, the flow got triggered and the flow is now at the step card and notice how the flow is waiting. It is waiting for the response from the user from the team's channel. Now if I head back to my channel, here is what my card looks like. Notice it says new ticket created dynamically places the values, the phone issue facilities. All those properties are dynamically coming in here 
and at the same time the user can respond. So what's my option? Is the request valid? Yes or no? Let's say I say yes, the request is valid. Everything looks good. If I can spell everything right. Anyways, at the same time, I have the submit option which will submit the card. Open ticket. If I click on this, this will actually take me directly to that item. Why? Because I was dynamically passing the ticket URL, if you remember. When I clicked on that button, it directly takes me there. So my user can look at the ticket, look at the description of everything's good, say yes, enter the commands and submit. And the moment I hit the submit button, this will respond back to flow. And because of the flow, if you remember, I went ahead and said that yes, I received the ticket response for this particular request. This gets logged and the flow will move ahead. And if I head back to my SharePoint list, you will notice that the request valid property has switched to yes and the and the comment is also right here. And if I go ahead and do the same thing and go through the process and mark it as no, this will go through the entire process again. So you can get extremely creative with this. This was just one example of how you can leverage this. Also, for folks who are very heavily into approval scenarios, if you actually use the create and approval task, right? So let's say I create an approval task. I just want to prove one point. So I'm going to call this sample approval and I'm going to assign this to Reza. OK, one very important thing to note about approvals is one of the outputs of the approval action, if you don't know about this, is adaptive card. That means even approvals gives you an adaptive card that you can leverage and you can actually actually go ahead and post this adaptive card using the same technique I showed you earlier to teams. So you can build your own use cases. You can build your own approval scenarios and leverage the power of adaptive cards to truly enhance the experience for your users through teams and power through teams leveraging flow. Extremely, extremely powerful things can be done with this. Heading back to my slides and we are almost on time and I will look at the, the questions as well that were asked. So just give me one moment, please. The learning resources, how do I get started? Well, of course, adaptivecards.io is the one stop shop for everything adaptive cards. So please go there, check it out. Check docs.microsoft.com as well with respect to adaptive cards. Look at the adaptive cards designer, play with it. You can do a lot of things in adaptive cards designer, but please bear in mind Teams only supports adaptive cards 1.0. Also, there is a community call that goes on every month, and this is the adaptive cards community call. And this happens every second Thursday of the month. This slide deck will be available later on for all of you guys, so go ahead and sign up for this adaptive card community call. All the latest and greatest enhancements as well as community uh, community driven initiatives are showcased on the adaptive cards call. OK, moving ahead. Thank you everyone for taking out the time for this session. If you want to connect with me, that's my email address. I'm very active on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. And of course, I'm even more active on my YouTube channel sharing the latest and greatest information around the Power Platform. So please go ahead and do subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And please don't forget that all of these sessions, we have feedbacks, feedbacks for speakers, feedback, feedback for the event. So please make sure that you provide your valuable feedback to us so that we can enhance your experience in future. We are also giving away Oculus Quest, three Oculus Quest every day for every region. Please go ahead and sign up for this raffle as well. I am someone who's very big into VR stuff, so I think I will definitely be applying for this. And let's not forget our responsibility for helping during the COVID crisis. We have a couple of really nice initiatives from as part of this platform. 10% of whatever you contribute will be provided by our sponsors in addition to what you're contributing. Yesterday during my session, I promised I would contribute to United Way. I did that and now today during this session, I promise I will contribute to International Medical Corps. Thank you everyone for joining this and I will keep the feedback slide open so that you guys can go ahead and provide feedback for this session for me and for this entire event. And while I keep this slide deck open for the feedback, which is right here, I will go ahead and look at any questions that you guys have posted. All right, let's look at the line of questions that were posted for me. So 
Uh, I have to go all the way back. So we're going to start right from when the first question was posted. Can the image that I added in the adaptive card be a part of a SharePoint document library? Yes and no. Uh, it cannot be a direct URL to SharePoint, but you can use the base 64 encoded technique that I showcased and you can plug it in. Where can we find out what version is supported for which product? This was a question by Jeff. So Jeff in the documentation links that I have provided, they have clearly highlighted which version is supported for which service. As far as Teams is concerned, if you actually go to the Teams connector documentation, it clearly highlights which features of adaptive cards are supported when you are leveraging adaptive cards with respect to Teams. The next question was from Krishna. Does this need any additional permission on another services in Office 365 like Graph? Because I got bad, bad gateway error when I tried this for a client. However, the same is working smooth in my local tenant. Now it depends upon where and how you have leveraged this adaptive card feature. In my scenario that I just demoed today, I was leveraging Flow and Flow is built on top of Azure Active Directory and I was leveraging Teams. Teams is also built on top of Azure AD. Adaptive cards is now a native capability. So because all the authentication and authorization was handled for me, I was not running into any issues. If you are planning to leverage the Microsoft Graph, which is which you want to probably get data from graph and post it to as adaptive cards to teams. You need to ensure that under whichever account that flow is running, they have the respective permissions to the graph. The adaptive card does not require any security. It's just JSON. The next question is where are you grabbing the birthday information from? So if you go to Office 365, so let me go to uh, office.com. Uh, when you go to Office 365, if I head over to my Office profile and if you head over to Delve, Delve is another service in Office 365. Every user can go and update their profile and provide their birthday information. So we saw that James celebrated his birthday. So if I go to James and view James profile, his birthday is tagged as today and that's why James's birthday information came in. And for this, I was leveraging, leveraging the Office 365 users connector and flow. The next question from Krishna again is what is the difference you see when you compare with send a customized message versus adaptive card and flow to teams? Because I can see I can do everything what I can do with adaptive cards. Yes, you can do everything you want in adaptive cards, but sending a customized message option that you saw at the bottom is when the user submits the card, when the data is posted, you would like to close that card. When someone gives you a response, you would not want some other channel user to also come and give an, a response to override that. So it's best practice to close the card. And when you close the card, it will just close the card. You would like to give a message as to why you close that card. So you can put information like I have closed this card because this user responded with this decision and this decision was taken for this ticket. That's the benefit of using that customized message and closing the card experience. Another question from Krishna. In fact, Krishna has a lot of questions. My question is why should I use adaptive card if I can achieve everything with the customized message to a channel or user? Great question. When you're using the customized message, the adaptive card experience is not there for you. I am assuming you're comparing this with the wait feature. Waiting is different from just posting a message. From the waiting experience, the flow is actually waiting for the response and you saw that in my demo. Uh, how long will the user have to wait for the response? That is as long as the flow runs and I believe a flow times out after 30 days if no response is received. So technically you have up to 30 days for the user to respond. Reza, I like this as I can see using this with MS forms, then data for approval and then capture the data in SharePoint. Absolutely anonymous. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. But that's a great point. I can leverage Microsoft Forms. I can have anonymous surveys that folks fill out. Maybe for I'm a customer uh, representative agency or customers are providing me feedback. I receive the feedback in Microsoft Forms. I can get that feedback and maybe run approval processes on it and respond to my users and maybe even store it to SharePoint. Great point. What other platforms can we expose an adaptive card other than Teams? Currently, it's Outlook and Teams. The connector is natively baked in for out for teams. Outlook is coming soon. Uh, follow adaptive calls that IO and please be a part of the community calls. You will know what's coming. Uh, I am an MVP and I am under NDA. 
non disclosure agreement with microsoft so there are certain things that i things that i just cannot share but i can tell you good things are coming and finally i have a very simple and straightforward sample message okay can we send the updated card as the data is changed a uh, great question great great question so what you could do in flow actually is if the data is changed you could write logic to time out that card somehow and uh, maybe send another card and void the previous one a uh, great question ramesh i would have to try that out i would say question mark right now so that's a great question and thank you so much guys these were all the questions i received some really really fantastic questions as part of the session and thank you for joining me today if you have any other questions you would like to follow up with me once again i will get my uh, information up on the screen for the next 2 minutes so you can go and grab this you can connect with me on twitter or connect with me on youtube and fire your questions there as well thank you everyone for joining